come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hello, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday. Doesn't matter if you're ready for it or not. <laughs> In our quest for total... It doesn't matter if we're ready for it. That's right. Obviously, every week. (laughs) I think of it more as a movie conversation podcast. We are? I think so. That's not bad. It's more welcoming and inviting, and we don't really review movies. Yeah, because, um, again, we're just coming off of watching it, so it's like, let's talk and figure this shit out. Good or bad. It's like we just had an experience, and we have to talk through it. It's more like a therapy session. There you go. Sometimes it really is. It really is. Yeah. And somebody said it was a book club for a movie. Yeah. That's also is kind this of, is a okay. safe place, is right. what this is. <laughs> well, I'm very glad about that tonight. Uh, okay, so these are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight, we watched the movie that was chosen by. Colin, what did we watch tonight? We went to opera. We did. Not the opera, just, just opera. Opera. <laughs> uh, directed from the year. Uh, 1987. Directed by Dario Argento. I am shocked. Oh yeah. no! Shocked. Uh, again, how you I weren't here last week? You weren't here last week. But oh. Alan claimed this is the last Argento movie he's bringing. That's bullshit. <laughs> that I said that, except a couple of decibels louder. Yeah. But I yeah, was like, yeah. bullshit. That's horseshit I mean, if I ever heard it. Okay. Granted, <laughs> we could be doing this podcast for twenty more years. In which case, yeah, maybe another Dario Argento movie will come. But we have done. I think like the you core, know, the core yeah. What you I, feel well, is the one. The one. There it is. The He's like, ah, well, yeah. maybe. And then we <laughs> went off when we did Two Evil Eyes, which I wouldn't even put on that list. But we did. Oh yeah, Suspiria. We did Deep Red. We did Tenebrae, and now we've done Opera. Mm. Feels like we've only four. Feels like we've done and more. It's because Ta- Colin talks about him every That's week. That's very, <laughs> very true. Colin, why the fascination with Dario Argento? Dario Argento is somewhere in the <laughs> Sit back, area. everybody. Sit back for the next Get your drinks. Hours. Well, I mean, uh, uh, we can't rehash it. No, we can't. There's we four absolutely other cannot. episodes yeah. where you can. Okay. But the guy is like in his 80s. Okay? Oh, yeah. I forget like right he's right still now. alive. Still alive. He's in a Gaspar No movie that mm. comes out this year called Vortex, where apparently he's not an actor, right? No. He's a director. Right. right. But he's the lead character in he's this movie. He's the lead? <laughs> it's oh. him. What? What's the movie yeah, about? Why not? It's about these two elderly people. She has Alzheimer's and he has a heart condition and it's a split screen movie. And apparently it's really, really hard to watch. Sounds very depressing. It sounds like The Notebook. And it's a, well, Gaspar, no, he did uh, Irreversible yes. and oh, the Void and okay. uh, Climax. And, yeah. He specializes okay. in hard to watch. Yeah. So apparently this one's really hard to watch. Okay. And Dario Argento apparently delivers like one of the best performances of the year. I heard it compared to Nicolas Cage's performance in Pig. All right. Okay. Well, now I'm wow. interested. Wow. Like, okay. I mean, that's, that's a that's, high bar. That's high praise. Yeah. That's a high when bar. When does this come out? This year. Okay. Uh, wow. Yeah. Keep and your eyes on it. Dario Argento has a new movie coming out this year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Another giallo movie called, I believe, Dark Glasses. Oh, okay. But Shudder picked it up, so it'll right. be a Shudder. Which original. is why you can, are not allowed to say you'll never bring another Argento <laughs> movie. Right. He's right. still <laughs> making them. He is still making them. Are they any good, Colin? Right. There you go. Well, well okay. I'm sorry. How many good movies do we bring? I was going like, to say, like, being good is not a <laughs> barrier for entry to this podcast. Oh, that's very true. That's true. true. Yeah. Because now, yeah. you're right. Yeah. We could bring, like, Dracula 3D. <laughs> the rules have been broken. We got to eight. Yeah. But you <laughs> yeah. want a week on here. In Dracula 3D, Dracula turns into a giant cockroach. Well, see, these uh, sound like reasons to be say, the podcast. I'm, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you may have just picked my next movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a yeah. movie called Dracula 3D and Colin hasn't brought it? <laughs> right. Shocking. Because it's bad. It's really bad. That's a problem. Once again. <laughs> Sorry, again. Argento. But Dracula in 3D. Yeah. Well, I own it. I reiterate. You know, I mean, well, that's <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he, there was a period in time, I mean, obviously, you know, from like the 70s through, he was one of the pioneers of the Jalo uh, film. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I don't know, I think Jalo kind of ran its course in Italy, but Argento kind of emerged from that as like mm-hmm. the Italian Hitchcock and then had this career that has is still going, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. But it kind of, to me, it, you know, if you're feeling it out, it, like it reaches its peak, I think, in 1987 with opera. And then, like, it starts to buckle a little mm-hmm. bit with, mm-hmm. like, Phenomena and the Stendhal Syndrome and stuff like that. 
and then it finally rolls right off the rails uh, into like these movies are really hard to watch. Uh, yeah, but you would still get like you know people. Uh, Adrian Brody is in one called Giallo, and oh really? Yeah, it's it's really not good. His, so, ma- his Masters of Horror was very not good too. Yeah, Pelts yeah. with meatloaf. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> It's bad. People tell I wish, you it's good. I just wish that had been the title. I know it's just pelts, but yeah, pelts with meatloaf pelts. would have been like, oh, I'm interested. I have no idea what this is about. It sounds flavorful. He, he, he yeah. cuts his own like skin, like his torso skin off and takes it off like a jacket. In that uh-huh. movie. Oh. But he did Jennifer huh. from the first season and everybody seems like Jennifer. I didn't like mm-hmm. Jennifer, but you hear a lot about Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So I guess the first question is... Um, I've never how many seen of you? <laughs> yeah, I was like, how many of us had seen it, right? No, no it was oh. going to be. How many of you have ever seen an opera? No, seen an opera? Yeah, yeah, I've gone to the opera. Yeah, you have serious? Way younger, but mm-hmm. yes, they took us for school, I believe. Yeah, I've seen it. This is yeah. wild because to me, like the barriers for entry for opera are so high. Like to me, it's one of the. It's like shorthand in a movie for like rich upper crusty one percenters. <laughs> like, and not sure. only that, like it's usually in a foreign language, so not only is it expensive, but you're not gonna understand anything that's happening. It's about the emotion, and, Michaela. And there's a dress code usually as well. So I'm just like, this is all all out of reach for uh-huh. me. Yeah, but I know now. Michaela um, is Julie Roberts and Pretty Woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know now they have uh, the uh, like the Met Opera is shown in AMC theaters mm-hmm, through like yeah. Fathom events. Yeah. I always see the commercials whenever I go to the movies. Yep. Like there's something coming up and I'm always like, uh-huh. I'm just intensely curious. I'm like, if you go to one of those showings, like who else is there? Oh, like, I'm also curious. Go- have you ever gone? Like, well, how do you no, know? I've never gone to one, but like, I'm sure it's all octogenarians. I was gonna be. Well, I was gonna be surprised if there was anyone in the theater. But yeah. see, this is what I'm saying. I don't under, I understand this world at okay. all. Now, now this type of event, I did not go to an. I mean, I have been to an opera, but I, I did not go to an opera like Fathom event. But I did go to a live Shakespeare event that was Fathom. Um, they broadcast uh, Coriolanus live from London when Tom Hiddleston mm-hmm. did it, mm-hmm. and I went to that. They showed it at um, the Sundance Theater in Madison, and it was packed like yeah. the whole, the theater was full well that's especially cool because yeah. it's live it was right? awesome you know? like it was yes. so cool was that broadway it was at like the west end in london mm-hmm. okay yeah but still that was amazing that's for i mean any theater nerd is just yeah. me, like i'll never make it there i'll yeah. never be able oh, to I, afford those prices i'm I just gonna go out. to the live event i geeked mm-hmm. out i made my mom go with me and she was laughing at me because i was like oh, like it's just <laughs> wide-eyed the whole time loved it <laughs> sorry anyway yeah, I, a lot just, of people go to that stuff yeah yeah i guess so because well, I, I, right. I saw the Frankenstein when it was yeah. uh, Danny Boyle didn't uh-huh. he direct yeah with uh, Cumberbatch and yep. um, yeah they're, they're, I oh, think yeah. but I think a play is different than an opera you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. play is way more accessible than yeah an true opera. that is true they're speaking you know yeah, language they understand mm-hmm. I mean I guess that's the thing would an opera be the same if it was subtitled I mean I, but, I, it's, but it's also like you, I mean keep in mind there are people like young musicians that are currently studying opera and currently oh, yeah. practicing opera so like people like that would be on, would be in the audience for that sort of thing so i think it would be a mixture of like an age of age groups but i don't know how popular well, sure i mean yeah. it's a i mean how old is the art form you know i mean right. it sounds like it's something right. that originated in italy correct? feels like it hasn't remember. changed yeah at all well uh, it, yeah that's the thing and hundreds then, yeah. of years and i think the difference between a musical and an opera if you correct me if i'm wrong an opera everything is sung and in a musical you will have dialogue and then songs sounds about that's right. my understanding okay. yeah this movie is not an opera. Just no. uh, for those of you no. who are listening. It's very <laughs> operatic. <but>. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is not singing through the entire thing. No. I don't know if I can handle that. It, no. Well, it's not a musical either. I mean, there is opera sung in it because we're basically behind the scenes of an opera. So uh, later on, Dario Argento did do his own version of Phantom of the Opera uh, right. with Julian Sands uh, and Ag- 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 Argento. Of and course. It's really... Like, really I, bad. Um, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. I felt like watching this, I was like, I feel like he's just itching to do Phantom of the Opera. Right, right. Okay, yeah. so that's... And right. I kept waiting for his daughter to pop up. I was yeah. like, she's going to be in here any minute now. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it has that... Um, the story structure, it feels like, is very similar, right? We have the oh, yeah. young ingenue who is suddenly thrust into the spotlight because the um, lead singer... The diva experiences a well in this case she's hit by a car right uh and so 
taken out of the game yep. instead of the young. I love how they shot her. But she only has a, a a blood cast. It looks like. Yeah. This is not an incredibly physically demanding well, performance. We didn't see the rest of her. She's just. <laughs> That's true. She's just That's standing true. like like when but, we I see mean, the understudy perform, she's literally just standing there. But for singing. my but for my understanding, again, I'm not a singer. But for my understanding, opera is actually like a very whole physical body. thing that you do like. Use you like your whole body, yeah, to the back of that bone. Yeah. 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 Dave Grohl broke his leg on stage and continued performing in a, in a cast in a wheelchair. I think I think if yeah, he could do it, playing rock, maybe music. she had he's like singing a, and maybe, maybe and guitar maybe she had like a broken leg. Maybe she had like bruised ribs and stuff too that we couldn't see. Mm. Maybe you know, yeah, we yeah. don't know. Movie doesn't give us enough information. No. How did they shoot? This her, movie Sean? assumes a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, at the beginning, I think we we take her point of view at the very beginning of this as we're uh, introduced to the opera. I believe it was an interesting choice. I, I it is. I like it. Um, it does a couple of things for the movie. Um, it keeps her identity obscured, so she's always a suspect throughout the thing. Which I eventually thought it was like, well, it's got to be the actress who replaced her. Yep. Um, right. but we open up on uh, the practicing of this opera and uh, not crow ravens ravens. Oh, the singing ravens. along to the opera. So our whole title sequence is over opera with ravens calling close, at close us. Close-ups of their eyes and stuff. Yeah, a lot of close-ups of the eyes and the beaks and they're talking and then they start sort of fluttering around the actress who's, you know, thinks the birds are against them. Yeah. Against her. Yeah, she hates those birds. It's a yes. weird uh, thing where you're like, okay, so this is just going to be, we're just going to dump a bunch of birds into the movie. <laughs> And like, with are the we going sequence, full Hitchcock? How are we doing this? Mm -hmm. oh, it does we'll turn out Hitchcock. that they have a lot more to do with the movie than I thought that they were going to have to do. <laughs> yeah. Because Dario Argento is a weird guy, and he... Uh, yeah, she is. <laughs> he seems to... A lot of his movies um, have this kind of environmental uh, thing on their mind. Um, it's always about, like, you know, insects and bugs and, you know... Uh, animals and plant life and all this kind of stuff uh, i don't know it's a it's a theme you pick up when mm -hmm. you watch like a lot of it but he kills them too he <laughs> kills a lot of animals he hates cats apparently and and yeah. birds don't fare well in in his movies either no not a fan yeah he's always got to be doing something to animals in his movies he just can't can't not do it can he yeah well i mean he made those movies that all had Animals in the title, mm -hmm. the bird True. with the crystal plume eyes, mm -hmm. the plumage. You love bringing that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cat with right nine tails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so would it surprise you to know that um, the? It is interesting because you see this gigantic pullback uh, as the camera goes back through this theater from the perspective of the diva. Um, that's because it's a it's a it's a shark and jaws situation. Uh, Vanessa Redgrave was cast and didn't show up. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. So they worked around her by, uh, they didn't, I don't know if they recap, obviously How do you somebody no show there. in a movie? Uh, yeah, right. I don't know. You know like uh, your agent's like, this is sketchy. It's in Italy or whatever. And she was like, no. Uh, so they, well, they worked around it. I say brilliantly. Mm -hmm. I really like the, the shot and the opening and how they all went about it. it Truly the shark and draw. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. And then um, our heroine makes her debut on the stage. Who's our heroine? Betty. Be yeah, her name's Betty. Um, it's a weird name for an opera singer, I feel like. I don't know. just didn't fit to me. Betty. Just Betty. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Her mom, it turns out, was also an opera singer. Mm -hmm. Her mom apparently was into some weirdo shit. Apparently. Seems that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such as. Uh, I don't know. Like. Watching Did, people get tortured. And yeah, stuff. <laughs> for her Something specifically, like I think. I'm a little fuzzy on this part, Colin. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. It feels yeah. like he was doing it lie. for the mother. Once we kind of figure yeah. everything out, but okay. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's these flashback scenes which aren't really distinguished as being flashback scenes. They're no, just kind of they injected <laughs> into the movie, and you're no. like. Okay, spatially, I'm not entirely aware of where I am. Yeah. Right. And also, um, no, keep, oh, sorry. <laughs> I have another question, um, but this might be later on. What's with the brain? Mm. Are we going to get to that? We see the interior shot of uh, a pulsating brain. Yeah. Yes. Is it a throbbing brain? Pulsating is throbbing pulsa is kind of interchangeable. Pulsating brain. Yeah. I think that uh, that's the brain of the psychotic. 
uh, you know, it's having he's having a schism. All right. <laughs> so the, it's it's the killer's brain because I it seems so. it seems like they're implying that it's Betty's brain. I think so because she was holding her head in a few scenes. Yeah, it when seems like they she's were having, cutting to the brain. So is she having like some sort of like schizophrenic episode? Well, this is what I was thinking when we first got into this because um, I mean, I, we're getting yeah. into this uh, Giallo movie, Dario Argento. I'm like, all right, so who's the killer? Right, like yeah. it's gonna be somebody and all this stuff. So <laughs> right. I thought. Um, we are going to spoil this, by the way. We are, very know, much so. Yeah. So I initially thought, like, okay, so she's doing it. Like, she, in her mind, she ties herself up. This is kind of, like, malignant okay. at this point. Okay, this mind, gotcha. In her mind, she ties yeah. herself up, and then someone dies, mm-hmm. and then she gets let loose, and then we right. go on from there. This slowly unravels because other people either, like, like, see the killer or somebody with sun- or binoculars or have an interaction with them. The cop ends up dead at a certain point, but... Yeah. Yeah, so I thought... It was like I, her, or she was doing the killing. Sure. And that, that would was have her been brain. fun. It would have been, yeah. <laughs> well, I like this fun. idea because I think I've misinterpreted the movie this entire time because I always thought it was the killer's brain, but I think you're right. It's her brain. It's her brain, like. Because uh, she doesn't. Con, do you forget <laughs> the last frame up. of this movie? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and there's also a lot of other camera work that kind of accentuates the fact that, like, she's losing her grip on reality. Uh, we get a lot of spinning camera moves. Uh, the, a lot of disorienting shots. Yeah, the the frame actually uh, pulses. Yeah, with our yeah. heartbeat and everything, yeah. which is pretty cool. Lots of, as you said, throbbing. Lots of throbbing. Throbbing. Is. Yeah, and there's heartbeat, you know, on the mm-hmm. uh, on the soundtrack and all this. So it is. It's actually her mental state is yeah. deteriorating. Yeah. Deteriorating. So that means the images that we're seeing are not the killer. Right. Right. It's her memory. Of a killing that she saw when she was a kid and yeah. has repressed, repressed it, and this is kind of coming out because yes. she thinks at some point that it's a, a dream that she right. had, right. Yeah. but it's like now this may actually be tied into things. And in the dream, she sees a woman being murdered by a black gloved killer wearing a black ski mask, but there's another woman who's tied up. Mm-hmm. And we're like, okay, is she the victim, next victim? She, but it, later, as this goes on, you realize that she is kind of a participant in the activity, in the murder. Yeah, She's like, and, she likes to watch. And I feel like we should point out that not only are we making this much more clear than the movie does, but it it takes a while to lay this out. <laughs> yeah, because mm-hmm. these scenes yeah. are spread out throughout the yeah. movie and yeah. usually brought on by a, a murder that's actually yeah. happening in uh, the current timeline. Yeah, right? and yes. we're giving a very, like I said, a much more clear synopsis than what we got watching it. But we got there. Yeah, that's right. I feel because <laughs> we have this therapy session now. <laughs> that's right. That puts it all together for us. Did we mention though that the opera they're performing is Macbeth? Right. Oh, the yeah. notoriously yeah. cursed play yeah. that you're not even supposed to speak the name of in the yeah in you're the not theater. supposed to say it yeah and they're they're doing the they're saying it a lot opera yeah. saying it a lot <laughs> the play which, which does not speak its name what is it they call it it's something the, they say something like that yeah. They're like it's very uh, yeah. You don't say Macbeth. superstitious. Yeah. yeah. Um, th- th- one of my f- thing I always think of about the Macbeth superstition is that episode of Thirty Rock where they want to do the sketch about Macbeth but they can't because it's cursed, so they make it Mayor McCheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they do the story of Macbeth, but it's Mayor McCheese <laughs> and it's genius. It's wonderful. Genius. Yeah. I like it. I'm trying to remember what the hell that you. was. It's like the Shakespeare play or it's the something play, but yeah, they actually theater folks won't say the did name. You, did you guys hear the latest Macbeth conspiracy? The latest thing it's been blamed for oh, is uh, the the Will Smith slap. So before that happened, Denzel got the uh, Samuel L. Jackson gave Denzel an award for uh, the oh, yeah. lives of Macbeth. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and they said it on stage, and that was the thing that happened right before the slap happened. Okay, I very love true. It. Yeah, wow. yeah, I love it. Work it all back. Can't See, say it. man. Nope, that's funny. We're, we're, no, they said it in a theater. You can't do it. You wow. can't do it. We're so, going to do yeah. it tonight, though. Cause, okay, uh, Will Smith's publicist is going to like take that and spin run it. with it. Yeah, Just run with yep. it. That has yeah. to like Hollywood everywhere. crazy plays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will Smith was possessed by the theater. <laughs> <laughs> I think, actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that Dario Argento was eventually asked to direct Macbeth uh, for... Uh, I'd watch that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully with the same sets. No, <laughs> not, not a movie. He did the opera. Oh. Uh, yeah, he, hopefully with the same sets. Yeah. They can keep making adaptations of Macbeth. I'll watch all of them. Like, that that Michael Fassbender one from a couple years ago was really good. Yeah. Michaela, I really liked you're it. You're in luck. 
They will. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's why I'm like, we're never going to yeah. run out of Macbeth. Yeah. No, thank yeah. God. I am okay with that. Yeah. I love Macbeth. Although this one doesn't. Too. Okay, so I was like, this one doesn't have the witches, but maybe it does. At the end, At the there's end, all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The naked, naked the women. Naked women. I was thinking that. I was like, oh, sheer, there's your witches yeah. right there. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. But there it's were like four. Okay, yeah. so what are they doing with the There's witches here? Or not the witches, but the play. Like, how would you describe <laughs> I don't know this? what they're doing we with don't it, know. Colin. Very uh, German? Seems very German. It's something... Uh... I don't know. It, it looks like there's a crashed World War II bomber on the right, or but then, World War I. But then Cleopatra comes in and starts singing over it like it's weird. And she's holding a gun. She's and got a gun. We're right. saying it seems like Boz Lerman's interpretation of Macbeth. But like it's a just, shitty one. <laughs> ex- yeah, like a low budget yeah. version because it's eccentric for the sake of ex- eccentricity, I yeah, guess. Feels like, like yeah. Like he went through a really bad drug phase. Yeah. Who it's did? Boz Lerman. Yeah, oh. that's what it feels well, like. Well, who is it in the movie? So who, this is the brainchild of. Mark. The director. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Mark is a horror movie director who right. has been, he's trying to direct a, uh, an opera for the first time. Um, because, like you do. <laughs> yeah. Because it's Italian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And opera is Italian art. So <laughs> yep. you're going to mix all this stuff together in uh, and do Macbeth. Um, so, okay. So we've kind of like laid out like she, our hero, uh, Betty is having all this stuff in her psyche, right? That's yes. like kind of saying that, you know, uh, at some point in her past, her mother was an active participant in these murders, right? That's what I got. But it turns out that the way, reason she's doing that, we're going to find this out later, is that she is denying sexual satisfaction to this guy, her quote-unquote lover, and asking him to kill people, Right. right. <laughs> right, and apparently her lover is Dorian Gray, because uh, yeah. he's mm-hmm. the same yeah, age it, as her as her child. I'm, I'm, yeah, well, I'm curious how long ago did her mother die? We're trying to figure this out based on the age of the killer when they are revealed at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she Betty's like what twenty two? Is that what they said? And he's like, I strangled your mother. You know, <laughs> fifty years ago I strangled your yeah, mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a solid twenty five years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what was he fifteen when he right. was romancing your mother? It's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, but the movie proper. So we have an accident that sidelines the diva. Uh, understudies brought in, and she has this great night. Um, you know, as, as Phantom of the Opera, the story goes, right? They're, rea- Act- they're acting like she's revolutionizing the entire art form. Like, the reaction to her performance is... Like, I, like this is the problem we have with breakdancing and breaking, right? Like, I don't know what good and bad opera is, mm-hmm. so I can't tell if this performance is really that good or not. Like, yeah. Until the lights fell, she was doing great. It seems I like think. she's yeah. hitting all the notes. Is yep. that what's required? I mean, to be I guess. A- I don't know, because I don't know what this song is or what Again, it's supposed I to sound like. I think it's all so. about the passion. I don't know how that comes across, but I feel like that's yeah. the big thing. Did you feel the passion, Tom? No, actually. I yeah, didn't. I thought I was like, this just sounds like someone singing in a foreign language to no. me. I can't really grab on this. Did you feel the passion? No, didn't do it for you? No. I thought the lip syncing was pretty decent. I said during the movie, sure. and it's like, eh, well, so I've like seen the whole worse opera lip syncing. The whole um, diva injured, bring in the younger one. Did you get any Black Swan vibes? Yeah, I thought that's where this was going yeah, for sure. I did too. Mm-hmm. Sean still hasn't seen that movie, so still haven't seen it. God now. Damn it, Sean! Watch that I'm movie; so it's sorry. so good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that should have been a Dario Argento movie. It almost mm-hmm. kind of feels, it feels like, like you know, it's like yeah, I'm, there's inspiration. I'm okay there. with how it turned out. <laughs> um, so there is a killer, a black glove k- killer. You Indeed. Know. Why are uh, the gloves so shiny? They're like latex. They have, they yeah. Pla- well, they have plastic rubber gloves on over them. Over, yeah, over the black gloves because you want to. Yeah, okay. you know, so it's black gloves and then medical gloves over, oh, okay. over those. Why? Don't, Don't know. know. It's just creepy. a different, just a different yeah. version of the black glove. Yeah. Like that's something. what it is, right? It's like you know we're gonna have the red gloved mm-hmm. killer or something. Right. He's got. But black medical gloves. gloves aren't normally that shiny. Did, was it a condom covering the gloves? That's what it looked like. It, it felt like yeah. he had something over the top of. Well, yeah. I mean, what was latex in 1987? Who knows. Yeah. <laughs> watch a white snake video <laughs> I mean, well, true. that's latex <laughs> well the the pomp and circumstances uh is uh interrupted by our first murder mm-hmm. oh. of a stagehand who happens to stumble into the, the opera box and is the, killed in a way that sean has often thought about <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is, this is but this is what you got to do if you're gonna make these movies right yeah. so somewhere dario argento thought you it's know like, these uh, coat hooks right yeah. they stick out so far from the wall what if somebody just <laughs> accidentally ran into one repeatedly 
Yeah. And you get stabbed in the back of the neck. Oh, yeah. Nobody's ever thought of that. I look at most things. I'm like, I wonder how somebody could die from that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> then he writes it down. I think it's part of my anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but that's how you write a horror movie. Right. right? You got to have so like a gets, list of stuff that yeah, you can put so in your back pocket. And one day smashed into that. So oof, you just oof, walk around oof. in life with a notebook like, oh, I could die on that. You die on that. Some days, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do that too. Yeah, not <laughs> coat, coat hook hasn't specifically crossed my mind, but I'm sure I would have gotten to it eventually. Right, <laughs> like, no, you just find the right yep. one. You're like, ooh, yep. that's deadly. Yep. Well, this way you got to look for something that has, you haven't seen in a movie before. Right, and that's your. I've always favorite. been waiting for the uh, the pizza. Oh, the, 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 you give it away for free. It's out there. Gonna, okay, the pizza cutter death. Somebody get I've killed with that. a pizza cutter. I know, that's what I'm saying. Oh, but for a long yeah. time, I hadn't. I was like, somebody needs to get killed with a pizza cutter. I was always afraid of the the old um, paper cutters in elementary Ooh, school yes. that looked mm-hmm. like a fucking guillotine. I, yeah. have, I have one of those oh, at work. Oh, God, I hate them. I, like, they just... That should not be out in the open like that. So like, is, is the faculty the scariest movie you've ever seen? I've never seen the faculty. Ah! Remember? Okay. I was on Josh here for Hartnett our episode. Breaks one off yeah. there and starts. But that's yeah. the Smacking thing. People. He, he yeah. takes the he takes it off. Right. It's yeah. a yeah. at that point. That's, that's yeah. less scary than the guillotine motion. I think. Yeah. Because yeah. it's always like, oh, I'll be right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're always like they're always a little rusty and old. So you really have <laughs> to push squeak. hard on yeah. them. Yeah. They're like uh, any more than three sheets of paper. This thing's not cutting it. So you got to go real hard. I'm just saying that I still use mine at work, and you're not making my anxiety any better. Dude, and like, that yeah. is still happening. Watch your fingers, Holly. It's just yeah. like how, you know, like you're more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than a sharp knife. Like that's, that's that logic applied to that big guillotine thing too. They're so dull. You gotta put more force on them. Ugh. They are. Mm. They're impossible. Yep. yep. Big fear. Like Big fear. Yep. <laughs> I usually just cut it by hand. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I, I see Holly just stepping up to it and then close-ups of her brow sweating. Yeah. Yeah. Her yeah. breathing has gotten heavy. She's like, do it. I'll just use the scissors. <laughs> yep. But then you use scissors. I and mean, then she like, starts you running. Mean, yeah, you something. start like, you know, trying to you put your hand in front of the scissors and then she's somehow. Just shaking. And you she's take like, your finger I can't off. do it. You know what? I have an office job, so let's just, you know, <laughs> I, move on. I, I've, taken, I've taken the tip of my finger off with an exacto before cutting something. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. like, I'll take that over the big fucking guillotine any day. Oh, like, man. And staplers, Holly? Woo! Death traps. Staple <laughs> cuts? <laughs> Do you have oh. any staplers I have to unjam? <laughs> Stop it! I know two people have died from paper cuts, so look out. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Office trauma. Well, yeah, but we're talking about this kind of stuff because Dario Argento movies are generally like a catalog of, uh, you know, like he thinks out some kind of, it's like, it's the way that he has people killed in movie in his movies as like a, a, an anxiety response, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you're like, ooh, that would be kind of, like, I can feel what that coat hook thing feels like, yeah. you know, yeah. or whatever. He's like the I'm, original Final Destination guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you get, I do get the feeling that he thinks a lot about, like, you know, like you're saying, Sean, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, yeah, what would it be like to, that would really suck if that mm-hmm. ended up in your on your tooth, you know. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, what if we jam this knife and just... And All right, he's talking click, to the sound effects guys. Like, I want to hear the clicking of the knife on the teeth, I and I want to hear it loud. Like, I Ugh. can't, I can't handle when my husband eats and I hear the silverware hit his teeth. I can't handle that even. And this yeah. was so much worse than that. Like, oh, it's it's just, it scene. makes my it's, skin. No, fall. it's a very good. This this whole scene is good because especially um, uh, it's a giallo, so we get a nice looking weapon in yeah. this one, which is uh, I mean, it feels like a dagger. Yeah. Has, I mean, look at Malignant. It, it kind like of feels like Malignant dagger, a little yeah, bit. It's a little when smaller, I saw but. the poster, the preview poster from Malignant, I'm like, yeah, you're like, I've seen this movie. But this is also in the way that our first death, like you said, the stagehand, he really gets it, and it looks like he really gets it. The way they keep cutting back to it. I know, but that first jab up into the neck. Oh, that's the second. No, that's the second one. Yeah, that's who's the first. The, co- the coke guy. The coke guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're still on that. I was yeah. moving on. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, so what happens is, so she has a, a love interest, I guess, right? The the stagehand after the show. Yes. They yes. Go Stage back manager. To, right. And it's the dude from Copycat. Right? The guy with the gl- wear glasses in Copycat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, is it? Yeah. Because I was like, this guy looks fucking familiar. Because he was in Copycat. Mm-hmm. Okay. And mm-hmm. that's why I think on that episode, I was like, oh, that's what he actually sounds like. Because he's <laughs> talking oh, yeah. in Copycat. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, so, okay. I mean, it's our first scene. Um, They've, oh, they have not had sex. They've tried to have sex. Yeah. And, and she's a wreck in bed or whatever she says. Like, I'm a mess. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I just, I can't, 
perform or whatever. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. They can't do it. And she this, can't have sex. Yeah, she can't perform. This brings up the legend of uh, opera singers uh, have sex before they go out and perform. Cause it, Which, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I've never seen a girl stop and be like, I can't perform. That's what makes this weird. <laughs> like, I, I've, I've, never heard of, it. I've never heard of that. No, you never. No woman's ever had like psychologically. I can't do this. I'm so. sure it happens. I'm sure it's got to happen. No, Pe- I'm people. I'm, are people. I'm, I'm just saying like the, I was like, wow, I've never seen that. <laughs> right. But you're right. I yeah. haven't seen you don't see that in movies. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. But then he goes off to. Get a tea. I don't know. Well, he's as tea, as yeah. you do. He's yeah. Tea, as yeah. You do. I think he's supposed to be British. I think everybody's so. British, but they're yeah. in Italy. Yeah. But OK. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah, it's OK. We don't have to have sex. Let's have some tea. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. Um, And we've seen the killer at this point. Was this. Did the killer go in and cut the uh, costume before or after this part? After. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the killer comes in and grabs her, mm-hmm. ties her up, and proceeds to tape needles under right under her bottom eyelids so that if she blinks, she's going to pierce her upper eyelids. Because yeah. he wants her to watch. This is a weird... This is what this movie, I think... It's an image, right? Yeah, this is the iconic... This is the image of, I've yeah. seen of this movie yeah. a ton, yeah. Yeah, but it does those Texas Chainsaw Massacre super close-ups of the mm-hmm. eyeball yeah. with these, like, you know, needles right up against the eye, which yeah. are, like, very, you know... I don't it's know. very uncomfortable. Yeah, because mm-hmm. the that Italians and their fucking eyeball I don't trust trauma. them. I don't trust the <laughs> yeah. Italians. They do love their eyeball trauma. Yeah, they do. There's something in the water. Because you yeah. know what? We all got eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. We're all terrified of it, and we only got two. Yeah. Yeah, zombie has some great eyeball trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, the wood and the... Yeah, it's yeah. the slow That might be the most the, famous yeah. one, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Eye trauma. Salvador but, Dali's movie's got some eye trauma, yep, too. Yep, yep. Yeah. Ugh. Don't like yeah. that one. There's this idea, I guess, right, that the killer wants her to not she uh not turn away. Like yeah. she has to watch mm-hmm. uh what he's about to do. Mm-hmm. And so that's why the the razors under the eye, the needles mm-hmm. under the eyes, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which you're like, okay, is this Dario Argento like mining some kind of is this a psychological thing? Is like he's tired of you know of uh, people turning away from his yeah, movie. Don't look away from my things. <laughs> like, watch. No, you're going to watch. Um, so the guy comes back in, the stagehand oh, yeah. from Copycat, William, I can't remember his last name, uh, McNamara. There you go. And he <laughs> comes in, and what happens to him? He he gets stabbed like under the, his yeah. jaw, like up through his mouth, and he opens his mouth, and you can see the, the dagger blade. come through like the... In, like in between his jaw and his tongue. Ah. It, oh, it's so. Oh, it's effective. It's that, so, ah. it's that soft, yeah. sensitive part of your body that it just like feels so vulnerable. Oh, and it, can oh, you imagine God. just your tongue flicking over and yeah, yeah, feeling yeah, that yeah, blade? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love this like close-up oh, insert God. effects. Oh, thing it's great. The, you know, it's it like, was very good. It looks really, really effective. Yep. <laughs> and then he gets stabbed a bunch of times. He's putting his hands up to yeah, defend him. That's always get, another thing that gets yeah. me when people put their hands up. Like it's a good one in there that yeah. bleeds a lot yeah. too. It's pretty oh. horrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. See, uh, looking at you, five cream. This is how you do it. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> do it better. Somebody got that reference. Yep. And we're all of a sudden accosted by a heavy metal music on the soundtrack. We are. Yeah. yeah. We are. We've been listening to opera this whole time, and then all of a sudden, just boom, metal music. I appreciate it. Do we have any insight into, aside from what may be the obvious at this point, when there's significant well, trauma, we go into the rock and roll music? I think that's what he's trying to, you know, that's what he's doing. But right. there's been, like, you know, Argento originally used uh, Ennio Morricone, you know, yes. like on his mm-hmm. on his first movies, but he was kind of the guy who thought outside the box of the time and brought prog rock, you know, ah. in to move into thrillers, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to use Goblin, you know? Yeah. And it seems like for a period in the 1980s, he was like heavy metal. <laughs> you know, it's the next thing. That would actually it. use it as the score. Cause I think he was producing demons around the same time that this was made. And uh, that has like a lot of heavy metal on the mm-hmm. on the score. So there's a couple movies there where he's like metal, uh, <laughs> and I don't I don't know that it's that you know like that was probably not like very far uh, thinking ahead. <laughs> it's like you got to come back from that. But right. is it effective in these scenes? It's I like it personally. A it gives us a change a change of scenery because I mean this movie is opera like. She's like, oh, the Betty has like, oh, I have a way to relax. And I'm like, is it more opera? Mm-hmm. And guess what, Colin? It's more opera. More so it's nice to get, I mean, it's nice to get a murder scene with some rock and roll 
just to break up that as much as I do appreciate the rest See, of it. See, I, I think it's odd. I, I feel like it should have been the other way around where like there was just like a general score and then anytime the murder happens, then there would be opera because opera is really dramatic. It's really, it, it can be really violent. So I feel like the opera should have been during the murder. It would have made more sense to me. I think the problem is that there's an opera going on. So we can't have... But because we get so much opera there, they don't want to have more opera over here. But we get opera like during those scenes, but we don't need to have it throughout the rest of the movie. She puts opera on her CD player yeah, so many they, times. Every like, time they walk into someone's apartment, yeah. Oh, I agree. Opera. Yeah. I agree. I can't like, I imagine like, loving opera I feel like opera it would have been much. more effective if the opera had been during the murder. This movie well, needs a legit score. It, it yeah. does, doesn't have one. Well, it does, it does have... At well, moments, okay, but, so it's not like... It's not a score score. It's like he took... It sounds like tracks yeah. of music composed by uh, Brian Eno and uh, Claudio Simonetti from Goblin. And so there is moments that have like the kind of these dramatic keyboard uh, pieces. So that functions yeah. as a score, but it doesn't seem as prevalent as right. the, 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 you know, the opera music. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's all of a sudden, then there's the heavy metal. So it is kind of interesting, right? You've got opera, uh, keyboard, you know, the score melodic score and then uh this metal stuff mm -hmm. metal i think you know is always supposed to be like the killer's uh frame of mind or something mm -hmm. like that he's metal <laughs> yeah um yeah it I guess. just doesn't i don't know it doesn't flow well for me it doesn't make sense it just kind of comes out of nowhere it's just chaotic yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. So chaotic is a good word yeah. yeah um and she survives this murder scene this bloody murder and then doesn't does. tell anybody about it. Yeah, this is where yeah. I started thinking, like, is this in her head? She's not Ugh. telling anybody. But apparently... No, that's just Italian film. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but somebody's keeping track of these things. Like, they do... They do eventually find out these people are getting murdered. Yeah, because, well, she tells the uh, the director. She confides yes. in the director. So we're like, okay, he's a, he's a suspect. But it takes her a while. Yeah. And even when they, like, she gets in the car with him directly after and doesn't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell you. And you're like, why? And she did call the police, yeah. but didn't tell them much except, you know, go She's here. She's just like, there's been body. a murder and hangs up. She, like, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> she did eventually tell Mark, I think, because they we cut she to She did, there. but once they got back to her apartment in the car, right, she's yeah. just like talking and it was one about of those other stuff. Cut to them and she's like, and that's what happened. It's like, Which oh, is fine because okay. we know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but and then she's all like paranoid. And she's got to like you know when she's gonna be left alone in the apartment. She's hearing noises and there's people crawling around in the air vents that are the size of a turbine. <laughs> but I feel like she's not paranoid enough. Like, well, she was taking pills, so maybe she's or quaaludes. Maybe because because he's <laughs> definitely like, quaaludes. He's like, do you want me to stay? And she's like, well, don't you have someone waiting for you at home? And he's like, well, yeah. And she's just like, I'll be fine. I'm like, I wouldn't be fucking fine. Right. Are wow. you kidding me? No. Especially because she's immediately sitting up in bed going, who's there? You know, yeah. like there's somebody. Right. Yeah. Like you just had needles taped to your eyes and watched like your pseudo boyfriend get murdered in front of you. Yeah, and she's okay. just like, I'm going to pop an Advil and go to bed. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Psycho. Uh, like I want Fort Knox. You, you turn to the police. Like I, the I would not. Yeah. I would no, be I, want, I would want to do in a chair sitting in front of the door. Okay, well, she gets that eventually. Well, there's, there's <laughs> another scene. Okay, well, there's a the police do get involved. There's they do, an they inspector do. who's played by Urbano Barberini, who we will Great all name. remember from Demons. He was the yes. guy in Demons. Um, and also the star of Gore and the outlaw of Gore. Anyone? Oh, wow. Anyone? We've okay. talked about it plenty enough. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Gore. They were canon boom. movies? Yeah. yeah. One, I think, has uh, Oliver Reed, and the other one, Jack Pal Palance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. the bad guys. Okay. Michaela? Summer of Canon. I was like, they, they, they might be making an appearance. We'll see. They were yeah. filmed back to back, like the Adventures of Hercules and yeah, Hercules yeah. too. Okay, um, so in the, her apartment, the well, the police get involved. Yeah. Okay. I think there is a you know because there's like these these murders and they realize that she is tied into it because I think she confides in the policeman that you know there's somebody he ties me up and makes yeah. me watch these things because this happens twice. Yes. The second time. Okay, like when they start showing those mannequins in the in the costume like department, the mannequins in these glass cases, 
I was like, first of all, that's horrifying. And They're second, creepy. Yeah. And second of all, something bad is going to happen with these. And I'm and, glad it did. And then I was like, this is Dexter New Blood also. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something, and of course, the killer puts her in one of the yeah. mannequin cases tied and like, up with the, the lighting in the case, the way it's like shining down on her face and the shadows yeah. it makes on her face is really unsettling. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very creepy. Well, the, the costume seamstress there's they discovered i think somehow that i think the killer has um put an anniversary band on her costume yeah Mm -hmm. and he's come back to retrieve it Mm -hmm. and i think when he comes back actually the, the first time maybe i'm mixing two scenes up here he sneaks in and this is also the room where they keep all the ravens in right. cages. Yeah, the big crate of ravens, yeah. Oh, yeah. And these ravens, we find out, are very smart birds. And <laughs> they escape on their own and attack him. And mm-hmm. what does he do? He fucking starts slashing through these he does. ravens. But it turns out this is a bad, bad move. He doesn't know yet. A mm-hmm. bad move. Oh, yeah. He kills mm-hmm. the ravens. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, also a bad move because they're actually killing these ravens. It, it yeah, sure it looks it like it. He's like slashing the fuck out of these yeah, really yeah, real animals. Yeah. Really hated it. Um, yeah. It's not good. Maybe that was maybe maybe no because he cut it up that night right he was like yeah trying yeah to get the he thing. cut it up that night yeah and then the next day or something like that is they're trying to repair this and yeah. it's just because at the, this point they're kind of like investigating the cops back they're looking into like the bird murders and the the birders the birders, birders thank yes, you a lot of birder mm-hmm. yeah the, the murder. murder of crows the murder of crows yes mm-hmm. we had to uh, oh, <laughs> damn it and. Uh, the killer strikes again, ties Betty up, and forces her to watch the murder of the seamstress. Right. Or, yes. And okay, so this one, there's like a, she actually does get the upper hand on him. Like they, they, there's a struggle and a fight here. <laughs> the struggle, a fight, uh, an iron is thrown. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an all-out war. Yeah, but <laughs> she's the, like paralyzed by it. Way <laughs> too much. Way too much focus on a bracelet. Yeah, if this right. is what you want. Take it, and she throws it, and she's like, in well, great she's pain. like, instead of getting away, she like goes and grabs the bracelet. Like she's way too focused on getting this bracelet. Yeah, yeah she like goes after, and she's like, ha ha, come and get it. Yeah, and she's like, what, dude? And then when she clocks the murderer and knocks him out, she has the option of she could go and rescue Betty, who's tied up right across the room, or mm-hmm. unmask the dude. And that becomes too much of an impulse to ignore. So. I would unmask him because she's tied up. She's not gonna. You can untie her in a minute. Oh, yeah. They unmask him. She's not going two, anywhere. Two people would be better than, you know, one. Yeah. You know, oh, well, yeah, that. but yeah. like. But also, she, and then she just takes five minutes to do it. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> and but also, you need to know who this dude is. Yeah, but it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't work out well for her. No. <laughs> no, because, of course, the guy, you know, wakes up as, as he's being unmasked. That We never get to see who it is, of course, because mm-hmm. the movie's cutting oh, yeah, she, around. Yeah, and she yeah. unmasks him and she's like, she oh, reacts. my God, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. She gets stabbed with a big old pair of scissors. Yeah, and then those, those surgically cut down. De- oh, they're big old they're fabric big, scissors yeah. for cutting denim and shit. Yeah. And yeah. Then he, that's Sean knows. He- I do know. <laughs> I had some very bad flashbacks during this movie. <laughs> yeah. But There's yeah, lots he, of fabric. A lot of fabric. Kind of a lot of fabric on rolls falling and, all yeah. over this the place. This episode is brought to you by Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> yeah. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Um, <laughs> and then he clanks the scissors on her teeth yeah, like, he cuts her he cuts her all but, but oh why? yeah because because the necklace dropped into her mouth and apparently yeah. as he had she to scoop dead. it out with the scissors i guess yeah so he tries going in there with a the knife this is all the teeth knocking and stuff yeah, which bothered cool. the hell out he's of us he's reaching down in oh, yeah. her mm-hmm. mouth trying to pull this thing oh, yeah. out then he realizes like, wow, he's that... not going to get there so he yeah. grabs the big old scissors and just cuts her down the middle until he can reach in there and pull it out. Mm-hmm. And the, sa- the sound. The it sound. It sounds like he's spreading yeah. ribs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty gross. It's we really good. You don't see it too much, but it's just the idea. Like, this is the, the wackiest sound is all idea yeah. in the world, right? Oh, yeah. That as a person is dying, they drop the evidence into their mouth and the killer has to cut right. them over to try and get right. it. It's like, okay, haven't yeah. seen that one. It felt like he was trying to hit every tooth with on the way in there. Oh. Though. Was, yeah. It was hard to oh. deal with. Don't like tooth stuff in movies. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't like it. Mm-mm. And so now Betty's freaked out so she wants police protection and the officer's like, well, okay, sure. I'm going to leave an officer here with you. What's his name? 
Uh, Daniele Soave. Soave. It yes. turns out it's played by Michele Soave, the director of Cemetery Man, which we've watched. On yeah, this we show. Did. yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Which we, it was like Michael Suave is what I think yeah, we called Michael, him on that last episode. Yeah. And he was also in Demons, which is yeah. the guy with the silver thing yeah. in his face. Um, but so well, yeah. So the but, but the officer is, says, okay. Well, it's a it's a goofy way to set this up because it's going to be like a Hitchcock scene, right? She's in yes. her apartment and. She's had her eyes taped open for a while, so they're naturally dry. Mm -hmm. So she puts drops in her eyes, which we get to see what that looks like, and apparently blurs the fuck out of her vision so she mm -hmm. can't actually see the policeman that she lets into her home. Mm -hmm. Which is, it's kind of weird. It's like, okay, normal, any normal person would like, just use some visine, but she like fucking like dilates her pupils or something. <laughs> yeah. Like she had razors or needles taped on her. Know, but, but, also 1987, what, who knows? But what, yeah, that's true. Who knows what was in eye drops back then? It could have just been like straight acid out or alcohol. Yeah, they couldn't figure out the alcohol yeah, amount like, in there, and so they're just like, like it just ah. put some liquid opium in yeah. there. Basically. Know, something. So, yeah. It's like, it's like that drug they're doing in Looper. Yeah. Right, yeah <laughs> Dropped. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But her friend comes, or her agent. Yes. Comes yeah. Over, Daria Nicolodi. Yes. Right? My favorite. Ozia's mom. Yes. Uh, and um, so the, we, we get one of the. So well, the, well, first, first the cop comes to the door. Right. Because she, uh, the original cop, I forgot his name. Yeah, with the glasses. Right. The, and was it Alan? The, Alan. Alan. I thought Alan. It was Alan. Alan. Santini. Some, yeah, there you go. Pull that one out. Um, yeah, so the cop Alan says, I'm going to send someone over um, suave, and he's he'll come up and sit with you, and you'll be fine. And so the cop, somebody does eventually come to the door and says, hey, it's me. And she's just like, oh, yeah, come on in, as she can't see anything. Yeah. And so she lets the dude into her apartment, but has no idea what he looks like or what he's doing. He's sitting in a chair smoking a cigarette. Yeah, but we don't see who it is. Yeah. I guess that's the yeah, thing. So we right. never do. Which this all leads to uh, a, a pretty. Um, I mean, I like the situation it leads to eventually. But then um, oh, I forgot what happens next. Well, Nickelodeon, well, Darian Nickelodeon she comes, over. comes over, and then but she was let up by a Danielle. She, right, she Solari. says she was let up by the officer, and that's the big dun 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 moment right. where it's like, but the officer's in the room down the hall. Yeah. Which, I mean, it should have been a little more suspense. It should have been. Like, this yeah, is... But you're going off in 90s movies when they amped things up and did all this. <laughs> well, this is... That, well, that's what I said during the movie. I'm like, I'm very Americanized in what I expect from my movies because they don't do it. And you're just like, well, that's where that would have been. That's where that that, mm -hmm. that beat would have been and everything. Mm -hmm. I like that it's not that and that yeah. it's different. Because it feels like more of like an update of like Hitchcock than it right. is right. going into, you know, right. like the 90s. That'd yeah. be like the next thing. I don't think Argento could really keep up with that stuff because he does do those movies eventually they have the quick cutting flash mm -hmm. frames and it's like yeah. it feels very yeah um but we also get our unmotivated uh exterior pulsing uh green light which is uh you know like a, a, a staple of oh, the wonderful. movies and Absolutely wonderful but this leads to i think is the one of the greatest show pieces in like argento's this career. is fantastic <laughs> This was, I had no idea. This was my favorite scene in this movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I did not expect it. Okay, but what, okay, so, but what is it that makes that, like, that gives it that extra pop? It's it a goes on, scene. there's there's so much back and forth. There's so much, show me your ID, show me this. So, there's so, it's not just one question and then boom, it pops off. There's so much back and forth. She's yeah. at the and people. And it's scary. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. And it's scary because he does enough for her questions to prove that he is a cop yep mm -hmm. that the audience is thinking okay i think i would have let him in at that point right mm -hmm. but as and soon as he's like here's my gun i was like here it is yes yeah. it's what i was hoping as soon as he this says here's my gun, that's what i was hoping for i'm like <laughs> yeah. do it and they do it in they the best way do possible it in slow-mo mm -hmm. and it just looks so spectacular it does mm -hmm. between the shot through the keyhole dario yep. nicolodia she's the close-up of the bullet coming yes. through the whole keyhole. i've, I've oh, watched the, the making the of that it's a giant bullet and oh yeah giant oh, like, yeah, i love it yes. <laughs> that's and then, great and then we just see it slowly enter her eye and come out the back and it's yeah and then oh, she good. falls backwards so yeah. hard so hard and, and the she, bullet hits the phone that Betty was yeah. trying to get on yep. and explodes that in a shot that's shot down the hallway at the yeah. same time. Yep. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It you is. are right. It is. And the way, like, her, like, motion of, like, getting shot, the way she goes back, yeah. I'm like, 
that's perfect. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a beautiful moment in this it movie. Is. Well, and then it you're is. just like, that's the last line of defense for her. Like, oh, it's yeah. over now. You're just like, okay, everyone they've put like on duty to help her out is dying. So yeah. it's over for her now. Yeah, because yeah, eventually the cop, the actual cop, falls out of a closet somewhere, been mm-hmm. stabbed in the gut. So. Yeah. You know, and he's she's gone. rescued by this uh, neighbor girl who's been hiding out in the... This is where it lost me. So I don't know if... Okay, so this is the only thing I could think was that, you know, we constantly have these sh- these uh, this idea that there's someone in the house with it. There's a lot of point of view shots of someone mm-hmm. in the right. house. There's uh, shadows going past the vents. And it's like, okay, is this all just red herring? And then to pay off the red herring, it's like... Surprise! I'm this little girl who lives next door, and I've been yeah, watching that you. We've seen one time. Yep, one. we yes. saw one clip of her watching TV for and she, three and, seconds. And I think yeah. she said something at some point. Yeah, yeah. Betty, you're yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, because like, that's they, not enough. Yeah, because they like live. Oh, I was like, live stream, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a live broadcast. Live so broadcast. Right. Yeah, remember broadcast. they used to have television, just have broadcasts. <laughs> It was a live stream. broadcast of the opera, so <laughs> yeah. the little girl's like watching home because she knows. We say all this. It's, it was on TV. Like yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just on TV. <laughs> Look how complicated life has gotten. I know. Us. I know. <laughs> so confused now. But that was the only moment we saw that little girl. Yeah. Until yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. And the little girl just basically helps her escape. Uh, because this building was built in like the 18-whatevers at this point. Yeah. And so the ventilation system behind the walls is a yeah. hallway, yeah. Yeah. which is cool slash fucking creepy yeah, yeah. Terrifying. Who knows? Yeah. yeah very terrifying who knows and she leads her into an apartment with her hooker mom mm-hmm. you wow colin you really went for hooker <laughs> right off the bat well, because i think what she just because she me- likes to dr- like walk around the house <laughs> she in a me- negligee at one she's point- not a hooker she's comfortable in her body yeah one point, even if her daughter does have a problem okay, with it but her daughter said something later about you're always naked you're always <laughs> naked so <laughs> that was very yeah. funny <laughs> Oh, so that was good. a great line. Uh, I hate you. You're always naked. <laughs> it's an Italian Which we just thing. hear off in the background yeah. as she's leaving. So, so she returns to the theater, Betty. Oh, yeah. And she's like, okay, I got nowhere else to go. Everyone else is <laughs> dead, basically. But Mark, the, in my the room. director, yeah. it's a scream two ending. He's mm-hmm. at the theater and he's like, it's a good thing you came here because <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> it turns out we had an eyewitness to the murder. And I know how to catch him. He's going to be here at the performance tomorrow night. We're going to get him. And We're whoosh, whoosh, going to get him. Yep. yep. <laughs> and so we have no idea so what, what is this man plan? is playing. I right. could not have guessed this <laughs> no. plan was going to be this awesome. No one could have ever guessed this is what was going to happen. Um, I guessed. <laughs> okay, but, but you didn't guess the way this plan... Okay, but you didn't guess the way th- this plan makes an entrance. No, no, I didn't. I, all, all I said was... The fucking ravens are going to identify him. Yeah. yeah, you did. I did not expect a Spartan entrance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Kool-Aid man Spartan entrance is what I was actually was. surprised. Like, most of the way through this movie, like, you guys were going, like, man, you should get a gun right now. And mm-hmm. she would go get a gun. Yep. She, you should go hide behind that thing. She would mm-hmm. go do it, you know? Uh, I heard Sean actually call out the murderer's identity, like right when he showed up mm-hmm. in the movie. And he's probably the killer. Blah blah blah. Yeah. I'm like, well, no. I was thinking that too. I was like, I was like, is that him? I was like, no, that's too obvious. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that's the yeah. thing with these movies. Like they give enough. There's enough red herrings and enough people. Like, well, they could have motivation. Mm-hmm. Where you know you're just like, ah, yeah. I don't know. My first thought was, I was the fucking cop, but I was like, no, that's too obvious. No. Well, but is it? <laughs> <laughs> But he does go to the show, it turns out. We don't know that. No. Because they, they right. bring these ravens. No, okay. they don't bring the no, ravens. No, no. no. they're not <laughs> brought. Michaela, they, how do these ravens make their entrance? All these ravens are in their big cage. Right. Which is like, We're in the looks, middle of a production right. on stage in it, front of an right. entire crowd and orchestra. Like, and this cage is like an iron medieval contraption. Like, <laughs> right. And it comes swinging, breaking through the backdrop. That's right. And scares the shit out of everybody. Yeah. Drops down to the ground and there's a guy in the cage and with yeah, all his The raven, raven man. The raven <laughs> handler. <laughs> yeah. And he kicks it open. Spartan kicks open the door, releases the ravens, but only one of them goes out to scout. Yeah. And then <laughs> The three-eyed raven, yeah, I assume. Yeah, th- yeah. That guy, that guy was warging into the he raven. Was. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll one cut and like, yeah. I, I don't have eyes on him yet. He just keeps yeah. going. Yeah. And he's like, third row. And then we get bird cam, and we see the birds. Oh, uh, bird cam was good. It was made me a little it made crazy, a little but nauseous. Yeah. I, I had to look away. Yeah. It was too much. It's like, <laughs> yeah, because it's the, the it. You start spinning from the top of the op, the opera house yeah. over the crowd. And then it drops and then starts like flying over the attendees. Yeah. 
And I've seen what they use to do this is this big, like, folding, you know, like, thing with multiple, like, crosses on it that yeah. comes out and drops. And it was like, wow. This is, yeah. <laughs> this well, is because the thing. space is, like, kind of limited, it's doing these, like, small, tight circles that are kind of nauseating yeah. until it gets lower and lower. And then it finds the guy and fucking pulls his eye out. <laughs> he yeah. starts pecking the And then the other ravens come for reinforcements once he targets the guy. They eat his eyeball. Yeah. yeah. Well, they regurgitate it. And then, and then like, eat it again. Eat it again. <laughs> and it's so gross. <laughs> Oh. Those birds were really eating an eye, and it was disgusting. Yeah, that was yeah. gross. But they eat those every day. They're but fine. somehow, but I don't need to watch it. Even though he's hit, oh, because that's right, he's got a gun. This is yeah. a terrible plan, right? Because if when she, uh, yes, it's a terrible <laughs> plan in public, and this he's is got why a gun. Nobody knew about it before it happened because yeah. they would all been like, "That's not a good idea." Yeah, it's like, but we Someone's identified him. Who would have known right. it was the cop? I mean, I'm like, he he fucking killed half the people on the stage, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? He just and yeah. he, then he gets up and he just starts shooting. He nails a witch, yeah. shoots some other people. Yeah. Other yeah. people run off. Why did they need to have a, the dramatic entrance for the Ravens, though? Why couldn't they just have the crate of them backstage and let them out? No, no, no. Uh, okay, Why did I'm they sorry. have to I'm do this whole, have, like... I'm not going to have questioning. I'm not going to have questioning of no. this beautiful scene we yeah. just had. Um, everything in this movie that is not a scene that I question. If it didn't happen, you ask why I'm not. Just, I'm just saying from the perspective of his plan... Why is this beneficial? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, the it's the element of surprise! surprise That's it! But it's even a surprise for Betty, because he's like, yeah, yeah. When yeah. she's like, when's it going to happen? Don't worry, it's going to happen. Right. Any minute now. Right. Yeah. And then just like, okay, now. And like, mm-hmm. for a no, just an arbitrary, like, okay, send them out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Genius. Wild. <laughs> Genius. Yes. Genius. But the killer escapes. Got One-eyed that. killer escapes yep. mm-hmm. and uh Which I would captures- have been fine with the birds just killing him right here. Yeah. I know. Yeah. The movie over. That yeah. would have been fine with me. Me too. I know, but then the movie does kind of run on long because Killer absconds with Betty, captures her again, and takes her up to... Oh, There's yeah. those scenes where... Uh, this movie does it a couple times for shock where the character in the shot should clearly see the other person in the right. shot. Yeah. But like right when they get up in camera range, like mm-hmm. poof, you know, mm-hmm. somebody jumps in. Yeah, from- yeah. Cause there's a killer that comes in real quick mm-hmm. and oh yeah, it starts putting a gun in someone's face or something like that. Yeah. It's just like, oh no, we should have seen him. Yeah. Right. Based on, but it's horror movie geography. So they never right. do. Yeah. But it, it's effective. It don't know. It does. Yeah. Just you're breaking the mm-hmm. rules of like, you know, logic or whatever. Right. <laughs> Um, and then he uh, decides to uh, tie her to a chair, blindfold her, and set himself on fire because yes. this is how you do it. But this is the uh, this is the red dragon ending. Mm-hmm. Where oh, you yeah. fake yeah, the body, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. and you're like, "Oh, they're dead," and you're like, "Yep, they're not dead." Yeah. So there's a big f- followed uh, you down to Florida. There's a big fiery uh, uh, ending, yes. right? Um. Where a body is apparently there because she shoots. You know, he's like, shoot me. And he, she shoots and then the whole she place is, Yeah, or she's blindfolded and there's a and camera angle where she can see under the blindfold a mm-hmm. little bit. Mm-hmm. Which I appreciate because I've always wondered, like, uh, to put that situation in a movie. I've always, again, always. Blindfolds have to be see. really tight to yeah. not yeah. see under them. Something. Yeah, yes. exactly. So I liked it in this. These are, he does a lot of shots of from, like, point of view, right? Mm-hmm. Argento does. There's, we see from, like, when she has the needles in front yeah, of her eyes. Yeah, which is really, cool. And, and it blinks. The eye yeah. blinks. Yeah. I'm like, what are they using to make the eye, you know, this black, mm-hmm. uh, you know, eyelid come down? Yeah. Or um, and so we're like, okay, he's dead. Right? He died in the fire. Didn't and, believe it for a second. It's all mm-hmm. over. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. we cut to Swiss. The, music. the Swiss Alps. Mm-hmm. Where Mark, only surviving member of this uh, theater troupe, has and- roped himself a fly. This is serious. <laughs> let's, let's never forget this. What, what, I, I'm so hung up on this. Why? Is it's this wonderful. This I've never. This is. Uh, Dario Argento just looks for reasons to torture animals, doesn't he? I mean, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. Even flies. Like, yeah. this is the man who would hurt her fly. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. He, so the director, right, is setting up a camera shot of like these beautiful, uh, the Alps. And has a fly on a rope so he can well, like on fish, filament a fishing yeah. line. it's a like fishing a filament line, line. Yes. so it will Although fly I would in like front it to of the be shot his rope mm-hmm. yeah really why right. uh, yeah, don't, i don't know it's Who knows? not important yeah no doesn't matter. i don't know i don't know what he's doing and mm-hmm. while that's happening we get a news bulletin that guess what the killer wasn't dead after all that was only a mannequin we only discovered it now yeah. However many days or weeks later. Yeah. That- I saw it in the shot of the dude burning <laughs> yeah. and it took them a week to figure it out. Yeah. Yep. 
and now there's an international manhunt underway. Yeah. Right. So Mark opens the one who's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to describe the ridiculousness of opening a window from the only house in the Alps and just yelling out. Like the like, most scenic. Run! Like, he's not dead. <laughs> but saying that in like the most scenic, picturesque. Birds like, are chirping. Like, like Zeke are walking by. There's yeah. a babbling like, brook. It he's is, like, run. It is straight up Sound of Music. It yeah, is yeah. The metal version. But Dario Gento is the black version of all films. <laughs> yeah. So this is the version we get. Uh, it's loopy. It yeah. It ends with, uh, of course, it turns out that Alan, the cop, is still alive and attacks her from, I don't know, or no, mm-hmm. he's coming jogging at her. Yeah, he's running after her. Well, he kills I their imagine- maid inside first. Right. 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 I think then he ran he- the whole way there. From I whatever so. country he was in. And, and yeah. that helicopter and all those Interpol agents saw were, him and just. Yeah, they've been, they just we've been, been chasing him, him for two days. Like, literally, yeah. literally me. <laughs> right. yeah. Running after and him. He's chasing her over the, the hills, and we see two German shepherds kind of like running around through the woods, which I was like, okay, they keep cutting to this for a reason. Yeah. I know. I yeah. was like, do they just have like. Like wild German shepherds. I assumed that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is Germany like? I the Swiss. I assumed they were her guard dogs. I assumed she got like guard dogs. I assumed they, they were like sense. herding. Yeah. The, they were going to go herd yeah. some sheep somewhere. Who knows? Yeah, it was. I didn't pick up that it was. You know, those Cop are dogs. canine. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but okay, mm-hmm. that was the tip. Yep. And then uh, Mark unfortunately meets his end because of being a hero yeah. type tries to tackle dude from off screen mm-hmm. with no help from Betty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. And just She's just trying to stamp, save herself. Stamp, stamp. I'm like, oh man, that that's kind of a bummer that you're, yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah, it's a it really nice and, sweater. <laughs> it was cable knit. Yeah, but nice Betty sweater. then goes, uh, okay, she's gonna give in to the killer's mm-hmm. bizarre. Mm-hmm. You know, you're right. I was hoping you'd win. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever. I am that. just like my mother. I want to watch you. Like you know. But I guess that's the promise, right? That he never had sex with mom. Now he will have sex with Betty. And they're going to walk away into the... Because she says something about, like, you know, something's working again or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's it's no like longer she's, messed up. Yeah. Um, but then, turns out it was all ruse, and she cold cocks him with a brick. A couple times. A rock she found in a field a couple times. Oh, yeah. The killer does not get, like, killed at the end of this movie. He no. gets arrested. Mm-hmm. And she goes insane. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what? What are you talking about? <laughs> she, she immediately, like, as soon as she sees... Mark get killed, and then the cops come out and like they're nab asking the her questions. And, yeah. yeah, nab the one-eyed killer. Then she, they're asking her questions, and she just kind of like starts to tune them out and starts like crawling through the grass, looking at wildflowers and she, bugs. Yeah, she and begins shit. to appreciate the wildflowers. Yeah, and like, the I'm lizard. not, I'm not like everyone else. No, I'm not like anybody. I'm I'm not I'm like I don't anybody. want to be with anybody. I want, I want to be, to be with alone. the sky and the flowers yeah. and the mm-hmm. butterflies. And then she lets a lizard go, hugs the grass, cut to black. Mm-hmm. I don't. I have no idea what any of this means. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was just a, okay. Would it surprise you? It know? means it's over. It, it is <laughs> over. Yeah. Uh, that that ending was excised from the American original American version. So uh, Orion Pictures bought this movie and was going to release it as Terror at the Opera, okay. and then they went bankrupt okay. or something. I, it did come out on um, on tape. But it didn't. It didn't actually get a theatrical release. So where did it end? It ended yeah. with the fire. I think like that completely fire. changes the movie. Yeah, because then he died in the fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's, yes. Wow. It's a very different movie then. They deprived us of the Swiss Alps. Yeah. And the extra insanity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, like, the thing I would probably cut would be the next door neighbor girl. But, oh, absolutely. But I get oh, absolutely. I, but it's like, well, how did she get out of the room? But yeah. I mean, like, do you really? She can go in the that? vents herself. Yeah. You can just see her crawling through yeah, the, you know. the vents. Yeah, the vents are so big, you cannot miss them. She could easily yeah. just go do that yeah, herself. Yeah, because she, she tries yeah. to psych the guy out by, like, throwing a, a down feather pillow out the window, which hits the ground and explodes. Mm-hmm. And, like, ooh. Explodes. That thing was not sewn properly. No. Yeah. It's like a wave of feathers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, a lot I would I cut guess... from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what? There's a lot. Oh, well, well, yeah, hold on to that because we'll we'll eventually come around and, and find out what we all thought of this. Uh, one more thing before we didn't actually organically talk about it, but uh, the, the cinematography on this movie, yeah, uh, was done by a guy named Ronnie Taylor. Mm-hmm. Ronnie Taylor won an Oscar because he shot Gandhi, mm-hmm. right? Like he had done like uh, prestigious films, and <laughs> then he did a Fiat commercial. That was directed by Dario Argento, uh-huh. and they paired up and actually did several movies together. I think uh, Taylor's last movie was a Dario Argento movie. It was Sleepless, 
uh, before he retired and passed away. So nice. Yeah. I like the cinematography in this movie. It's great. It's, yeah, it's, it's really this good. There's some good got, pull out. There's some yeah. really great. You're stuff. always really following good. people around, and yeah. the transitions are cool. You know, from uh, whatever drapes that you're plowing through mm-hmm. and spinning. It. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of camera calisthenics, but mm-hmm. I guess definitely you expect yeah. that of a Dario Argento mm-hmm. movie. All right. Uh, we are going to tell you what we thought of this movie, but first of all, we're going to go around the room. Oh, no, sorry. We're going to read some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder how he feels about ravens. Like, do you think they'd recognize him from previous adventures? Which part? I don't know. Well, let's get some ravens and find out. <laughs> isn't he always working though? Like, isn't that his that thing? I bet the me. I bet the ravens steal his <laughs> eyeballs all the time. He's <laughs> constantly having to go get them back. <laughs> that's my favorite version of Igor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, go with that. I'll go with that. After they <laughs> eat it and then they regurgitate. Either way, it. like, or he's got to go find a new eyeball from someone else. <laughs> The Adventures of Igor. We could do like a mini I know. Yeah. animated Why, thing. Yeah. There's enough. If we go back and listen to our, our old shows, there's probably enough I'm material. Stringing together a whole movie about yeah. Igor, I'm sure. All right. Well, we Igor's wanna, interstitials. <laughs> we want to let you know how you can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um... First of all, oh. Stephen Helicopter, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hi, Stephen Helicopter. And Stephen Helicopter says, tell Sean to pick pervy movies again, like when he picked Sorority House Massacre 2. Ah, that was How long ago was that? Movie. That was a while ago. You weren't here. Like, yeah, I, I was, was like, I that. did you not You were here for that, because that was, that that. was uh, Colin, Travis, me, and you, I yeah. believe. So a while ago, but he has made this request of you before. He has. And then I brought Flesh for Frankenstein and got no credit. Not for it. I was trying not to pick up pervy. the mantle. Not as pervy. There that are, wasn't a pervy there movie. Are, there are full on shower scenes in. That's, yeah, it's true. So I don't. Think that's her ticket to Hawaii was pretty pervy, right? Also yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Steven but helicopter. Listen to episodes from <laughs> the past five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go. Uh, yeah. All right, about tonight's movie, Opera, Michael Whitaker says, ironically, I would also shove needles in my eyes instead of going to an opera. Uh-huh. I, I kind of relate. That's a strong <laughs> statement. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, uh, so about the image of the... Uh, Don't you want to shove them in your ears? Mm. Well, let's see. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, Sean Rogers says, this has always bothered me. I'm pretty sure you could still blink and be fine unless you have really sensitive eyelash- eyelashes or some shit. Mm, you're getting like an eye- it's probably impossible getting an eyelash caught on there. You're just like, ah. Yeah, but I think when you see the close-ups, it's like it's supposed to be like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like right there. They, shoot, they, shoot in, they don't shoot it side by side, so you can't see the distance between right. them. Right. Uh, Murphy's Mamarin says, I oh. truly love this movie and just got it on Blu-ray. Great choice. And Novato Judoka says, great choice, Colin. Well, I mean, these are my people. <laughs> right? So, uh, thank you. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called Hellraiser Hell World. Uh, Michael Whitaker wrote in again and said, after so many movies, I got to know, how the heck does Pinhead manage to get his shirt over his head? He's got to be rough on sweaters. I mean, it's like oh. a... It's like a- <laughs> It's like a jacket, right? So it doesn't go over his head. Yeah, oh, right? Yeah. It's oh, laced no. up on the yeah, front or something. Yeah. Oh, no. I think the pins are a daily application. Yeah. Or at least he, like, <laughs> puts they, them they away ret- to go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> when he yeah. wakes up in the morning, this yeah. Time, yeah. Does when he's he time sleep? to, yeah. Yeah. He just, he's I mean, you got to get your rest somehow. Beauty sleep. Does he? He's yeah. a, like, demon thing. But is he always <laughs> on the go? <laughs> yeah. He just exists like Candyman. He's always there. And Man, that's summon sounds, him. But he does work close, so. That sounds tiresome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler wrote in, okay, I'm not sure if I read this one last night or not, or last week or not, but uh, he says, okay, let's pro con this movie. Pro, it has Doug Bradley as Pinhead. Yep. Mm-hmm. Con, fuck, I don't even know if I have the time or energy to have this conversation. <laughs> this movie, or this is a movie that could make me think of the freak show, or would make me think of the freak show. Like, I like Pinhead, but after Hellraiser 3, I kind of stopped paying attention. Good luck, my friends. The movie, you played it. They came. Huh. I mean, I think society stopped paying attention after Hellraiser three, yeah, right? Like, I think that, so. I, like as a society, we're like, eh, we're good, you yeah. know. Feels mm-hmm. like it. I think yeah. so. 
Uh, Stephen Helicopter wrote it again. <laughs> oh, boy. And he <laughs> says, hovering. Uh, yeah, just he, hovering. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I never understood the Hellraiser pinhead infatuation. He reminds me of an old woman that's into B- BDSM. Scary, but not the same scary horror movies typically go for. <laughs> Colin, that kind of aligns with your scary. hot take on that episode that you think pinhead's overrated. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's good for the first one. I like him. Mm-hmm. He yeah. yeah. Wallpaper. He shows up. He's spooky. <laughs> uh, about, speaking of spooky, talk spooky to me. He says, I've only seen The Cell once, but there was another movie about a killer drowning his victims and posing them in his garden. Have any one of you seen Cabin by the Lake, which came out the same year? I have not seen that. I'm interested now, though. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Mm, sounds mm-hmm. familiar. I don't to recognize the poster art. No, I don't either. Uh, Exta Vakir says, oh if I'm pronouncing that right, says uh, D'Onofrio carries the film. His acting is great. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. G Money says, I watched this in middle school when it was released. And oh. I feel a lot of the film kind of fell flat aside from J-Lo and the horse. Uh, everyone remembers everyone the horse. remembers the bisected horse he yeah. says uh, it's visually stunning almost like watching an opera at times ironic but, uh, <laughs> uh, he says uh, this and in dreams are very similar films so it would oh, be yeah. a great double feature I'm not I forgot familiar about with in that, dreams. but now i'm interested too. with robert downey jr yeah and Matt benning in the sunken city never heard of this yeah. i think she oh, tunnels yeah. into his mind he's a serial killer yeah i remember this yeah. i've heard of this but i've never seen this all right, then. Well, you put it on the list. Uh, you put it on the list. Yeah. Grant Parrish says, because uh, we brought this up, the director uh, of The Cell, Tarsum Singh, yes. also directed The Fall. And he says, The Fall is a fantastic movie that has lovely colors and a story that makes you think it will be sad and, like, it will. You will <laughs> likely cry, but it ends with joy and, like, that's cool. I haven't <laughs> seen it in a while, but I believe there is an animal murder in it. Oh, uh, well, thanks for the warning. So, Sean... We'll bring, it next yeah. week. we'll bring it next week. Um, about the costume design in the cell, specifically the uh, Bram Stoker, yeah. Dracula inspired sleep suits. Uh, Neil Gum yeah. says, Twizzler Army. It yeah. really is. It really does yeah. look like That's that. That's great yeah. because it looks like they taste like Twizzler. Yeah. That's good I want to take a bite of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Carson Snark commented on, uh, we posted a photo of uh, D'Onofrio in, in one of the demon get-ups where he had his hair done in yeah. there. He looked like Glenn yeah. Danzig. Yeah. Was pointing out. He <laughs> says, uh, I wonder if I could pull off this hairstyle. Yes, you could. Yeah. Same pictures. Only one way to find out, sir. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You got to do it. And uh, without photos, it does it didn't happen. Yeah, that's right. very true. <laughs> right. All right. So now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie opera, beginning with... Michaela. Uh, I mean, Italian horror in general is like kind of a blind spot for me. Uh, I think because they <laughs> give it two more years here on the show. <laughs> I, I think because they are so weird, and you have to be like in the headspace to watch a movie like this. Um, I don't love his constantly finding a reason to actually kill animals. It's always multiple times in his movies, and it's just like it makes me question him as a person. That like, why are you going out of your way to like torture animals all the time? Don't love that. But I did enjoy this movie. I thought it was really interesting and creative. And I was kind of dreading watching it because I was like, if this is going to be about fucking opera, I'm going to be so fucking bored. <laughs> yeah, you're taking because, a real chance. Because I was like, I just don't fucking care about opera. I just can't be bothered to care. It's just not my thing. I, I it's in, Like I said, it's inaccessible to me on many levels. So opera is, I just want to hear the setting for that. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. It's going to be a bunch of like whispery stage drama, you know? And, but... It was really gory and really creative in its kills. And it, I don't want to, like, it could have had a little bit more suspense worked in, but I understand that's not the Italian way of doing things. So that's fine. <laughs> this um, is not the way. <laughs> there is, like, so much you can cut out of this movie, though. And, mm-hmm. like, even some scenes just taking a few minutes off, I think, would even really help. It does drag a little bit, but I think the payoff to everything is worth it. So I definitely think it's worth watching. I, uh, Colin, is it is it like this part of his like Mother of Tears like thing or no? No, there were, that's Suspiria, Inferno, and the Mother. Okay, of Tears. okay. <laughs> See, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> this stuff. Um, well, it's definitely not the first two. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think. Like, I haven't seen a ton of Argento in general, but I really like this one a lot. It went places I did not expect. I didn't know ravens were going to be such a big part of it, and like. 
I was we were talking about when we watched this movie, but like any movie where like someone walks into a room and birds start going crazy, or they walk into a room and the birds were going crazy and get quiet, I'm just like, oh no, that makes me really uncomfortable. I don't like it when animals sense uh, disrupt. I don't like Did, that. Do you feel the same way when we watch Monkey Shines with all the monkeys? Yeah, in there? I feel like yeah. you would have had a problem with the monkey Didn't noises like and all that stuff I, too. I don't like when animals are predicting like something <laughs> happening. Yeah, they're you know? when their sixth yeah, sense yeah, is going yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, that's like. Um, there's an episode of that 70s show. It's a Halloween special where Kitty Foreman's watching the neighbor's birds and she goes in and turns the lights on and it's all these giant cages of crows. And that, like that even still was like, and then and she's like, she's like, who's a pretty bird? And she turns the lights and she goes, who's a pretty damn big bird? And like that scene always sticks out in my mind of like, yeah, turning on the lights and there's a bunch of giant birds in cages in the house that you didn't expect. Fuck that. No way. I'll never look at caged birds the same way Dude. again. I'm like, they're, wi- they're ready to break out of there. All They're birds. Like, yeah, bird like it's yeah, birds are just a whole thing. <laughs> it yeah. And like The Birds is a terrifying movie that I saw way too young as a kid. So like anything that gets close to that makes me uncomfortable. So I definitely recommend it. It's gross, it's creepy, it's weird. It will take turns you didn't expect. Um and just like even though you've listened to this and it's been spoiled, like you got to see this whole set up to catch the guy with the Spartan kick and the Ravens and all that stuff. You gotta see it. So I would definitely recommend it. Sean, what'd you think? I mean, that ending, that, that, woof, yeah. if for nothing else, that ending. Um, I mean, I think I've said it before. The first ending. The first ending, yeah, yeah, yeah of, of three. <laughs> of three. Yeah. Um, I think I say it every time that we bring an Argento movie on here. Um, I like it more and more the more I see. Um, uh, Michaela, have you seen Tenebrae? No. Watch you Tenebrae. You Tenebrae. Tenebrae I've is one seen of- Suspiria. This and red, uh, deep, deep red, red. Deep red. Watch Tenebrae. Tenebrae yeah. is one of my favorites. Tenebrae, yeah, might mm. be. It's uh, great. Mm-hmm. Like that might be his best. Like deep red, I think is like deep the, red is very good. But mm-hmm. Tenebrae, I like more. Gotcha. Yeah, it might be from start to finish the, <clears throat> yeah. the most like. And pelts, obviously, I've seen pelts. Right, so. <laughs> <laughs> got that one cornered. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the combination of Argento, the cinematographer, because the movie is beautiful. Um, I, I like the idea of it. Um, I mean, it had us guessing the whole time. So, you know, kind of the whodunit of it all it works for this. Um, yeah, he's just, uh, the, Argento has just got this very unique sense ability that he puts into his movies. Um, like I said, the more I like, the more I watch, the more I like, I'm definitely going to recommend opera. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's still really good. Like, and like Michaela said, even if you've listened to us tonight, go watch it. There is an atmosphere, um, there is stuff you can feel in this movie. It's very good. I definitely recommend it. Holly, what do you think of opera? Um, first of all, we were, while we were watching this, I remarked on the costume that uh, she was wearing for Lady Macbeth. It looked uh-huh. like Whitney Houston and the Bodyguard. I just wanted to show you what costume I am referring to, so you all have a reference. Oh, oh yeah, it, does look it looks insane. very much like and Whitney Houston. And that came out like 1990 oh, yeah. and ripped off opera. That's amazing. And pearls so, and stuff around yeah, the neck, which like she had earlier very, as well. The body, it's you very bodyguard. Very correct. So yeah. bodyguard a, is very opera. Yeah. <laughs> we should do a side by side. Yes, Colin. <laughs> opera inspired. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Obviously, that's what happened. Um, so uh, uh, Italian cinema is not my bag. It's not really my my joy as far as stuff that we've watched um i like michaela was saying you have to be in the mindset to watch movies like this it's so nonsensical with the with the way the characters react to things and everything and it drives me insane i don't (laughs) like that at all so sometimes it is hard for me to watch movies like this um and i i agree with what you're saying like there's a lot of this that could be shaved off um obviously it had three endings we did not need three endings I think the little girl was kind of pointless. Like, there's a lot that can be shaved off of this because it is a little long. It's a little slow in parts. Um, But that being said, like this movie did things I did not expect. It it, it's it's beautifully shot. Um, That entire scene with the shot through the peephole. My God, that was one of the like most incredible scenes we watched in a while. That was really well done. Um, the gore is surprising. I was not expecting a Spartan kick with Raven Cage. I mean, th- this movie did a lot of things I was not expecting. So while Italian cinema may not be my bag, this movie's an experience, um, and I definitely think it should be it should be watched. It's it's something. Dario Argento does 
does some things that uh, I have not seen before. So uh, as far as like filmmaking goes, there are things you need to see in this movie. Um, and I, I think they outweigh the thing, the problems I have with the movie. Um, that's just personal preference, but there's definitely some cool stuff that makes me recommend it for sure. So, Colin. There you go, Colin. See, you bring him enough of these things. We're all just eventually going <laughs> to slide over to you and be like, yeah, we like it, Colin. This is the idea. <laughs> I have been working on this for, this is like the Dario Argento starter pack, right? It's the ones that I've brought. Because I was actually thinking, I'm like, okay, you know, if you, it is an acquired taste, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think once you get the bug for it, and, and, and Michael and Sean kind of feel like they're, <laughs> oh yeah, my, well, I got then I have recommendations, <laughs> but those ones I think require that you're familiar what you're getting into. Whereas the ones that I've brought, it's like okay, if you don't know what this is, you can still kind of you know they're accessible, accessible yeah. as uh, as a movie, you know, even though they're they they're uh, it, it, they have an Italian sensibility about them. Um, <clears throat> so something that you know Holly was saying, it's like I, you know the the um, the way that people react in Dario Argento movies mm -hmm. always does seem like. Who are these fucking people? Like yeah. these are it's always very dreamlike. Like, the yeah. writer, yeah, I get okay, but the, I I hear that as a defense all the time. That like oh. it's very you know nightmare sure you know all this kind of stuff, and I'm like okay, that's somebody kind of trying to justify right. Um, these are not normal people reactions. Yeah, it's just kind of some bizarre stuff going on. It's because he 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 is so focused on the the craft, right? That is his thing. It's the mm -hmm. plotting. You know, and sometimes mm -hmm. I don't even know if he cares if he's getting everything to connect there. You know, it's just about the style and how mm -hmm. it, it plays off. This one I actually thought like made sense. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I mean, as much as a you know the killer's motivation right. can make sense because it's like I don't get that at all. No, like, you what? That is huh? a downfall of this. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> it's just bizarre. But it's like, okay, this is some kind of he's a killer, right? He's yeah. got some broken mind. Like, okay. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, uh, what I like about, uh, Argento and, and opera, he seems like he's straddling that line between like the art house and the grind house, right? Where in this movie, it feels like he had a budget, you know, like this is for an Italian film. It feels like this is like a big one, you know, and it looks uh, grand to say I, the least. I remember that they were saying in Italy, there was like, you know, you know, this Christmas, Argento opera. You know, I mean, it was like those are oh, the yeah. teasers Simple. that would play. You know, it was like, oh, he's got another one coming out. You know, I mean, he's a national treasure over there. Uh, and you will, you go like, you know, some of his movies are kind of crappy, but um, <laughs> I think it's the legacy, right? It's, yeah. He's been around for, he's a, the elder statesman at this point. He's outlasting most of the working directors. I mean, you know, he's outlasted John Carpenter, he's outlasted yeah. Brian De Palma, you know. He has an output that's like, it's crazy that this guy's still doing and all the stuff that he's doing, an actor now in, in <laughs> movies, you know, he's directed operas, he's directed TV commercials, you know, it's like, this guy is something else and still, still chugging gone. along. Um, this movie specifically, yeah, I don't know, I think it's uh, uh, um, one of his more accomplished movies, um, I think probably because of the addition of the cinematographer. I mean, that really is like a, mm -hmm. uh, a big... Um, win for this but um yeah i don't know i'm I'm gonna recommend this movie i think you have to check out opera it does crazy things that i think uh argento desperately tries not to come he desperately is trying to come up with stuff you haven't seen before like that's mm -hmm. the thing i like about him like he's torturing himself to try and come up with like these crazy f and sometimes they're like that's nuts like, how did you come up with it? And I'm like, well, that was, he, he was like, oh, I wanted to do, no, they didn't. It, no. How about, oh, I got this. Nobody's seen this. No, nobody's seen the, the birds yeah. burst through a Broadway play. Like, is it, is it, does it make any sense? I, you know, that's debatable. But, but is it like, fucking yeah, fantastic? I mean, yeah. Sometimes it works and sometimes it's the goofiest thing that you've ever seen. So, uh, but opera, I think, is accessible to a lot of people. It's a pretty good horror movie. I think you should check it out. And I believe that makes it. Freak Show approved, which surprises Ooh, the shit is. out of me, but I did appreciate watching it here tonight that, you know, you guys were engaged with it 
in a way that I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this movie's actually working. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's yes. how I'm kind of judging that, like, yeah, it can actually play, you know, mm-hmm. and it's still whatever, 30, 40 years later, close to 40 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still works. So still works. You should check out up or there you go. There we go. Uh, next week on the Saturday Night Free Show, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? Okay, look. Oh, oh boy. No. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was, we, we were promised some things in the last couple of movies we watched that I don't think were fully delivered. And so I feel like I'm going to bring a movie that does. Okay. Next week, we will be watching Virtuosity. Oh, there oh, you go. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all Strap right. in, folks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Virtuosity. Going to be a good one. On the next episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.